So we're with the Fonz, Russell Downing, new team. Um, we spoke about a bit about it at Yorkshire, but it's all coming together just nicely now. Yeah, I think when we spoke in Yorkshire, I was probably a little bit under under pressure, under stress. <laughs> but uh, it's been a been a real busy busy winter period, riding a bike, working, getting this show on the road, and yeah, the next few days is going to be a nice feeling of uh, yeah of success really. Just tell us. Where, where the team is at the moment you've got you've got all your riders is that pretty much firmed up yeah roster's all full you know uh it's it's i think we're on uh 13 14 guys 13 guys i yeah. think i was i not don't like to say the number 13 but <laughs> yeah that's where we're at so yeah it's all full and everything's dropping into place now so we've been up against it with the uh, timelines and all this but we're getting a uh, good thing here with uh, dave he can he can pull up, pull it all in because he's got all the all the connections and he just has to press go, uh, and then a few weeks later the stuff arrives. So yeah, we've been we've been good, really good. So quite an international lineup. Uh, what with some Italians, German, Irish, yeah, Brits, yeah, very interesting. Aussie, Aussie uh, Islandman guys. So yeah, we we uh, we're putting it out there, and I think we've built a built a good team and. Hopefully we'll hit the ground running. A lot of the guys know each other from either different teams or the youth racing. Sort of Jake and the Mazones have got a good uh, good relationship there. So it's good. There's going to be little groups within the team that when it all comes together, it should be knitted pretty pretty well. What I mean, we we don't want to mention the big four zero, but this year, what, what, what's it mean to you? Because last year, Tour of the Worlds, you led Brenton out, and we're still third, I think, yourself. You still, you're still racing at the. Yeah, still, still got it. You know, I said I've always said in my head I'd, I'd like to get to 40 before I even think of retirement, and uh, that's that's where I'm at now. I'm still, I'm still training hard, working on this project. But yeah, it's all good, and 40 is only a number. Uh, I think if I was not very good at 40, I'd hang it up before. But I think now I can still, I can still do a great job lead out or captaining the guys on the road. So yeah, 40 is 40 is just a number. Progression. You're still, you're still finding ways to to tweak things and, 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 and race better. Yeah, I don't think there's much progression on there, but yeah, it's, things have changed. I say these these training methods and then these different things. I think a lot of the things now. It's I'm not just a bike rider anymore. I'm a bike rider. Obviously, got um, married married home life things to do, and uh, it's just it's just juggling, and uh, it's been stressful. But now we we're kind of getting there. So. Yeah, you just know not as much recovery as it used to be. You can't go out and do six hours and then six hours in front of the TV. So I'll probably knock it back an hour and do the other, do the other stuff. <laughs> well, it is tough being a bike rider because I mean, you get to a certain age. When you're 21, 22, you've got no mortgage, no no ties. It's probably quite easy. It doesn't really matter what happens in terms of teams and that. But once you start to settle down and you've got commitments and you've got mortgages. Being a pro bike rider isn't the easiest thing in the world. It's not, yeah. So so many times you've got to sort of September, October, and you've not even sorted a contract for the year after. That's quite worrying times. I've had some really bad Christmases <laughs> in the past, you know, not not even knowing what you're going to be doing in two weeks' time. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's stressful, but yeah, life's uh, <laughs> life's not a holiday or a fairy tale, is it? it? Certainly isn't. So, what will your goals be this year? Because you've got you've got a quite strong lineup with the with the two Italians with Bjorn coming in, and um, you know I know that the likes of Damien and that in the Irish squad there. Yeah, so the the big uh, the big goal for the team is to get a start in Tour of Yorkshire. Right. It'd be, it'd be unreal, you know. We've we've built a strong enough team to actually be competitive there. Uh, so that's all that's all good. So that's a big big objective. So now that's what we're working on with. Uh, Obviously, ticking all the boxes, we've done everything correct. UCI, uh, do all, as much, yeah, give them as much, uh, yeah, press and things as we can, and just, uh, yeah, hopefully get a start in that, and then we'll roll on from that. And you've got a very unique bike. How cool is that? Yes, uh, it's just coming to the fore now. It's been a couple of weeks in the making. Uh, sort of, Jorg's a great uh, Spanish artist. And uh, it's some connection that Dave's had. He's done some work within the company before. Uh, he's, done a, he's done a bit of work with uh, Messi, the, this is a footballer or something. Uh, so, yeah, 
we threw some things around we've got the got the dog on there got the fonds got a few other things so yes yeah, it's, it's quite a unique bike that will be uh, getting covers, out getting out on the roads today it covers your career from from probably a very young rider upwards yeah yeah i was there. thinking of putting a few more things on there but i didn't want it too busy so the the artist had some ideas and i threw a a bit more paint on the wall, really. <laughs> and just the one, just the one of those. So um, your spare bike will still be in the uh, the old traditional. Yeah, they just uh, they just building that one downstairs now. They wanted to concentrate on this one to uh, keep keep bike. keep the old man smiling. That'll be your race bike. Yeah, I'll be my. I think I'll be my special race bike. Special That's still race. mine. Uh, if it's looking a bit, uh, a bit of rubbish weather, I might I might wrap it up and put it in the wardrobe or something. Two years at, at JLT. How have they been? Brilliant. You know, uh, sort of, yeah. Uh, John couldn't ask for any more from John Heritage, and he's even he's even been good with those guys here in setting up this team. You know, uh, open open to pick the phone up and advise us on things. So yeah, can't can't thank John enough and all the guys at JLT for a, a great couple of, great couple of years. It seems like it seems like more. It seems like I've been there a long time. I think that's probably with my relationship with John's been been going some years. So. There's never been a year gone by where I've not spoke to John where I'm going in my career or what I'm doing. So John sort of give me give me a little nudge to sort of do something different rather than just be a bike rider because he don't want me uh yeah working in a factory when I when I retire. So he's been great for sure. So we're looking at you in in, the, in a new team, captain, leader, um, mentor. I yeah, there's a lot all these different roles that you'll be. Yeah, got some labels on my head there, you know. But yeah, sort of captain and mentor is one that I really uh, I thrive on. I enjoy some days going going to the front of the peloton, taking the taking the guys to the front early and getting us set up and shop and getting us respected. And I love doing that. And some of the world tour guys and that'll say, who, who, who the heck's this team coming up? They look at me and I say, yeah, you, you remember me, sort of thing. And yeah gain a bit of respect that way and that's what I really enjoy and I want to continue to do that and show the boys how to do it. Now there's probably because we're in 2018 and I think it was about 2011, 2012 you rode for Sky? When was uh, 10 and 11, first, 10 11, first two years. First two years, so that must seem like a whole world away. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it's like things have uh, gone, gone a little bit crazy since then, uh, cycling's obviously gone on the up. Uh, I was on the what I thought was maybe coming towards the end of my career yeah. massive win in uh, Tour of Ireland which then re rebooted my career again and I saw Could squeeze squeeze it yeah. yeah I say I was first uh, first British guy to win a win a stage for mm-hmm. Team Sky win, a, win an individual bike race we won yeah. the team time trial in Qatar that year mm-hmm. but yeah won uh, the sprinter stage career in international so yeah it's been a it's been a it's been a good journey, and I don't think it's over yet. <laughs> well, of course not. I hope not, because um, I mean, you know, it's great having guys like you and Mark before you, and and that who've been around for a while and um, become part of the fabric of the sport, really. Um, but when when did you start? Just just take us back to the beginning, because I remember the very early years, Grand Prix of Essex. I don't think my memory is good enough to even <laughs> actually remember when I started. You know, I sort of the boys ribbed me and say, oh, late 90s, and then you went to. Linda McCartney, so you would have... Yeah, I, st- I started McCartney. started riding a bike when I was, yeah, probably before I could even walk, so bikes, bike riding's always been been in the family, in the blood, and first, uh, first started professional in 98, uh, when World Class, World Class Lottery Funding came in, World Class Performance Plan, and then it's gone on from there. Uh, so some years were good, some years were bad, and some years were absolutely shit. But that's uh, that's bike racing. And in the early days, Dino was around racing as well. Any rivalry between you two? A little bit, I think. I think uh, Dino chose a different route. He went to university. I turned pro straight a couple of years after uh, leaving school, really. So I so I wasn't a wasn't an educational guy. I just I like to be uh, actually doing it. Dino's you know, the brains of the outfit, and he he went to university. But I think we did uh, we did get uh, pretty competitive when we were together in uh, recycling days. Yes. Uh, some days some days he'd be on fire, and I think competitive in a, in a good way. Yeah. It wasn't we were banging his heads against each other. We we knew the days where we could uh, help each other out, and I g- gave my race up some days for Dean and vice versa. And 
yeah, it's going to be it's going to be good to have him as a have him as, have, him, have him as a DS, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm never going to label him as the boss because <laughs> he knows that's not the uh, that's not Brother the label. Dean, I think his title. Brother Dean, Brother yeah. Dean. Um, just tell us about some of the highlights from your career in terms of the races that you've ridden because you rode Robay. Yeah, are you Robay? Yeah. That to me stands out. I don't know for you whether that was one of your because these are icons, these are real. Yeah, I've done, obviously, done Flanders a few times, Roubaix, Giro. So, yeah, the Giro was uh, one that stood out for me. I uh, always wanted to do a Grand Tour. Tour de France is the Tour de France. It's the pinnacle, but the Giro's special. It's, yeah, yeah it's more colourful, I think, and it's it's actually a bike race now. Sometimes the Tour can be a parade. The Giro is just, every day, just full on, so... So yeah, it's good to good to do all these uh, races and yeah, put them on the on the tick box. <laughs> Lots of stories to tell from them. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, no. So because you had Ru- a, the Giro didn't didn't go to plan, did it? The Giro was good uh, until like two days to go. I had a crash, went over a ravine, broken sternum, bloody uh, nearly a punctured lung, but got through the finish, coughing blood up, and yeah, managed to managed to finish my. F- First and uh, <laughs> first and last uh, Grand Tour. Yeah. And you look back at, at the career so far. I mean, it's still ongoing, of course. But do you look back and think, pretty satisfied? I've done this. I've done that. You know. Yeah. So on, it's like the last couple of years, I have been really satisfied. And uh, British champion. Isn't yeah, it? British champion. Uh, sort of British champion on road track, and I think the only one I've not won is time trial, and I'm never <laughs> going to win that. But well, yeah, it's been it's been a good career and. I think now, if I was to never win a bike race again, I'd still still be satisfied. But the pleasure I get now is from other other guys winning bike races, uh, and that's where I'd, I'd like to, yeah, uh, yeah, where I'd like to show what I can do with the other guys. And yeah, well, I remember when I first started out. This was around the days of the Grand Prix of Essex uh, when you were riding, and I've noticed huge changes in the sport, the way the team works come into it, and now you're part of this great strong team. Just tell us about the changes in the sport over, over those years and how important having this team together like you've got is. Yeah, I think you're right. I think at one time a day there was one or two guys from any club team or whatever who were good. The other guys were, yeah, not to be nasty, just making up the numbers or whatever. But mm. things now have totally changed. It's all, even the UK teams are like world tour teams. Everyone's got a job. Uh, some of the guys don't even get past the first hour or they don't finish the race. But that's bike racing. Uh, you obviously see from what Team Sky have done with the sport. There's a there's a time and a place for every bike rider, and they they've got a job to do. It's a bit like working in an office. Some guy does accounts, some guy does the finance, they do all that. And yeah, it's a it's a great sport to be in now. It's uh, it's ruthless at times, but not uh, not all the hard work gets noticed. But I think uh, within the within the team, it it doesn't go unnoticed for sure. More control of races? Definitely, yeah. It's not just uh, getting the break away early and see what happens. Yeah. It's actually got, they've got plans and structure now. Yeah, I remember the days when you were with Griffo, how you were, you were dominating the racing here. You'd attack and you'd attack and attack. It was just manic. It was. Yeah, those were the days, you know, so <laughs> like a spring lamb or something just bouncing around. But now you have to control the efforts and uh, see, what's, see, see how much you've got left in the tank. Okay. Well, finally... What about whereabouts are we going to see the guys racing? I understand Eddie Sowens, Roy Tame. Roy Tame, obviously, a big connection with the team because he was the manager of the original. Holdsworth team, yeah, yeah. sure. That we, so we're going. To, I think we're going to split the team there. Early doors go up Eddie Sowens. I think I'll be going down to the Roy Tame. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we. I say we're a UK team. Uh, so base round, base round here. Yeah. So we have to, we have to support the UK scene. You know, we don't so want. Maybe the first. I think about March 10, that is. Yeah, I think that's going to be the first uh, yeah. first pin on the map. So we'll go and support the, the UK scene and uh, hopefully yeah, hit the ground running. Nice. And, and uh, looking forward to those that, to get going. Yeah, that's definitely. Long, yeah, after a sort of busy, busy different winter of yeah. uh, focus, it'd be, be nice to clip the pedals in and uh, yeah, pin a number on. So the boys are all ready to go. Some of the guys are revving up for Commie Games, so they're all in good shape. The Italians have just come over, so they uh, into into the snow yesterday out training. But yeah, they're in good spirits, so they just the same. They wanna they wanna get racing now, and like I say, we're a race team at the end of the day, so uh, everyone wants to race.